Over a decade ago, Japanese developer Team Eco made a name for themselves with the release of Eco for the PlayStation 2. The game's director, Fumito Ueda, expressed his desire to create a minimalist experience around the boy meets girl premise. In order to achieve the highest level of immersion, the developers employed what was dubbed subtracting design to reduce elements of gameplay that hindered the player's ability to feel fully immersed in the world. Four years later, Team Eco would deliver another stunning classic for the PlayStation 2, Shadow of the Colossus. The game once again employed a minimalist approach. Players were free to explore a massive interconnected world, but there were no proper dungeons, NPCs, or enemies to battle. Instead, Shadow of the Colossus focused on exploring the vast unknown and battling 16 giant colossi in a suitably epic fashion. Given the cryptic nature of the game's narrative and the giant size of the world, players spent countless hours digging deeper to find anything undiscovered. Eventually, the quest to bring everything the game had to offer into the light gave rise to a handful of myths, including some that still persist. Regardless of which myth you followed, in general fans believe there is one last mystery buried within Shadow of the Colossus. Uncovering this alleged final secret has been one of our most requested subjects, so we decided it was time to heed the call of the Colossi. Join us now as we set off into the Forbidden Land to seek out the truth. Given the broad nature of this myth, we had to do some homework in regards to figuring out what fans claim to be the final secret. The most common thread involved a theory about a hidden 17th Colossus that could be unlocked by performing various feats, ranging from beating the game on every difficulty to reaching supposedly impossible locations. According to the most cited method, you have to beat Shadow of the Colossus on normal and hard modes, and then conquer the normal and hard time trials. By doing this, your grip meter would become strong enough to scale the Shrine of Worship at the center of the world. This massive landmark is where the main character ends up after slaying each colossus. Once you reach the top of this seemingly impossible to climb building, you can then scale a path that leads to the secret garden seen in the game's ending. Once there, the 17th colossus will appear in a short cutscene, smashing the rear wall. After you fight him, the path to the very top of the temple will be opened, leading to a special surprise. As you play through the game and conquer each colossus, your grip meter increases. You can also improve your grip by slaying white-tailed lizards. If you finish playing through normal on the same save file, you'll notice the grip meter carries over to a new game on the normal difficulty. However, your grip meter will reset on hard mode should you clear the game and start a new adventure. Clearing the time trials does earn you unique items that can improve your character's abilities, but they can't be carried over between difficulties. Despite learning of these setbacks, there was one final tidbit that looked promising. Apparently in the original PlayStation 2 version of the game, you can abuse a technique known as the diagonal jump to preserve your grip meter. By scaling the Shrine of Worship using this technique, it's supposedly possible to reach the top and access the secret garden. With this new piece of knowledge at our disposal, we set out into the Forbidden Land and began the long climb to the top. <sighs> After several attempts ended in disaster, we finally managed to reach the top of the Shrine of Worship in one piece. From there, we were able to follow a winding path up to the entrance of the fabled Secret Garden. Within these sacred grounds were many trees, some of which contained fruit we could shoot down and gather, but the area was devoid of any life forms. No matter what we did or where we went within this garden, we couldn't trigger the supposed cutscene, leading to a 17th Colossus. Curious as to whether or not we had done something wrong, we searched for any information regarding the 17th Colossus mystery, and came across the Nomads blog, run by a Shadow of the Colossus fan named Michael Lambert. It chronicles his findings over the years. Nomads research not only includes a plethora of interviews and translations from Japanese sources, but a ton of insight into the game, courtesy of hacking the game and searching through the entirety of the game's memory.
We reached out to Nomad to discuss this mystery, and he generously offered up a lengthy history of the myth and gave us his blessing to showcase his findings, some of which can only be found within his numerous videos and postings. Additionally, much of the information and revelations found in Nomad's blog can be attributed to the hard work of two other dedicated Shadow of the Colossus fans, P. Cole and WWW Area. <laughs> From our research, we found that there have always been three big mysteries surrounding Shadow of the Colossus. The first is whether or not there is a 17th Colossus. The second involves the possibility of an alternate ending, while the third and final mystery wondered if it were possible to reach the very top of the Shrine of Worship. Not the secret garden we saw, but the top of a castle-like structure towering above the garden. The answer to all three Sadly, is a definitive no. The easiest way to see that there isn't a 17th Colossus is to use a free editor called the SOTC Viewer, which allows anyone to view and extract all the models, animations, and textures from the game. By doing this, you can see that there are only the 16 Colossi you encounter in the game, though there are a few interesting items of note that piqued our curiosity. Within the game are a few textures that carried strange labels. There was a strange black texture named Boss Worm, and another one that resembled skin carrying the name Sirius. Additionally, there's an image of an idol that's never seen in the game. These images are referenced in the Japanese Shadow of the Colossus official art book, which contains extensive interviews and commentary from the game's designer, Fumito Ueda. Ueda originally planned for there to be 48 colossi in the game, but realized quickly into the development cycle that this number was too ambitious. So he cut it in half, leaving his team to shoot for 24 colossi in the final version. 16 of these 24 made it into the retail release of Shadow of the Colossus, while 8 were fully conceived, but were ultimately left on the cutting room floor. If you head over to Glitterberry.com, a site specializing in translating rare and obscure materials related to popular gaming series, you can see sketches of these eight colossi, as well as beta shots of them in action. While Ueda states that the colossi don't have official names, he does mention the staff's internal nicknames for the 24 colossi. The 16 found in the game are the Minotaur, Mammoth, Knight, Kirin, Bird, Minotaur B, Eel, Gecko, Turtle, Naga, Leo, Poseidon, Snake, Cerberus, Minotaur C, and Evis. The eight cut from the game are Devil, Griffin, Monkey, Phoenix, Rock, Sirius, Spider, and Worm. Sirius and Worm appeared in the file names for two of the textures still contained in the final version of Shadow of the Colossus. It seems like that's as far as Team Eco got with programming any of the eight cut colossi into the game, further cementing the fact that there is no hidden 17th Colossus. That's unless you hack the game. In one of Nomad's blog posts, he mentions that there is still proof that there were once 24 colossi in the game, but you have to hack the game to see it. At the entrance to the Forbidden Land, there are 12 columns on the west side of the temple, yet only 4 columns on the east side, which represent the 16 colossi we see in the game today. There are 9 standing columns plus 3 fallen columns on the west side of the temple, which makes 12. On the east side, there are only 4 standing columns, but there's just enough room for 8 more columns, which would add up to 12 on either side, representing the original 24 colossi. Nomad posted some images illustrating this finding, along with an image from the art book showing the temple at the entrance to the Forbidden Land with extra columns on the east side. He then speculates as to where each of these eight cut colossi could have resided on the map based on visual evidence contained in the first few screens of each monster in action, as well as the description in the art book of each colossus. Nomad even did mock-up shots of how each colossus might have looked in the final version of the game. One other piece of evidence Nomad used to deduce the locations of some of the colossi are leftover structures and landscapes contained in parts of the map you can't reach without the aid of cheat codes or hacking. The most famous of these findings is a fully rendered dam floating in the middle of nothing found at grid I-2 on the world map. By using cheat codes and hacks, you can travel to it. There are other similar areas, like a cave close to the dam, as well as a series of unfinished mountains within various grids. What's interesting about these seemingly incomplete structures is that while they appear off the visible map in the final version, some of their locations are within the visible map within an earlier version of the game. Nomad and others have painstakingly researched every last inch of numerous incarnations of the game in order to build a repository of knowledge outlining what might have been the original vision of Fumito Ueda's Shadow of the Colossus. In issue 261 of Edge magazine, Daniel Robson was able to sneak in a question from Nomad regarding the changes made to the game's overworld. When asked about where on the map Ueda had planned to place the eight colossi that were cut from the game, the developer responded with the following statement.
Clearly, Ueda likes the idea of leaving some things up to the player's imagination, which goes hand in hand with the minimalist design philosophy of his games. <laughs> Despite the extensive development history provided to fans, it was clear that only 16 Colossi made it into the final version of Shadow of the Colossus. This still hasn't stopped some from continuing the hunt for other secrets, including the belief that there is an alternate ending to the game and a way to reach the very top of the Shrine of Worship, which supposedly holds one final secret. We were once again directed back to Glitterberry's site, where she had translated a segment of the Shadow of the Colossus official art book, including Ueda discussing the game's ending. While at one point the team considered an alternate ending, the current resolution is the only one you can achieve in the game. However, Ueda expresses some regret over the decision and wishes he would have gone with a different ending. So no matter how hard you try to escape the powerful suction of the pool in the end, you can't escape your fate. As for the top of the Shrine of Worship, it seems players were never meant to go to the top of the temple. It turns out there's no collision detection up there, apart from a few small patches, and much of the structure is just for show. An earlier pre-release version of the game did contain a completely solid version of the shrine, but how you were supposed to get up there is a mystery. While it was assumed that players would be able to climb all the way to the top, it's not fully known what purpose the area would serve, or why it was scrapped in the end. We were also informed about two unique items that are still in the game that can only be accessed via hacks or codes. One is the Mask of Titans, which appears to give you the same power boost as the Mask of Strength you earn from clearing six challenges in the normal time attack. The other item proved to be far more intriguing. The Eye of the Colossus allows players to see the battle through the eyes of the giant creatures. Although fun to mess around with, it doesn't work very well in general and lacks any other functionality. But much like playing through Shadow of the Colossus, the quest to discover the mysteries behind the game is more about the journey than the payoff. The incredible time and effort people like Nomad, Peekle, WWW Area, and countless others poured into uncovering these secrets provided us with an encyclopedia of knowledge that goes above and beyond what you'd see from most other fan bases. It's truly a testament to the power of this game and why it's hard to let it go. Sadly, the reality of this so-called final mystery is best compared to trying to find the pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. It's likely that fans will continue searching for years to come, finding new clues that drive us to hope once again, only to be left no closer to the truth than before. Nomad revealed in a recent blog update that Edge Magazine's Daniel Robson asked Ueda a final question off the record about how the director felt about fans trying to uncover new secrets by hacking the game. Sadly, Ueda simply replied that these types of findings come from an illegal source and refused to comment on them. If you want to rub more salt in the wound, consider that Shadow of the Colossus could quite possibly be the last glimpse into the virtual worlds crafted by Team Eco. The Last Guardian, the follow-up to Eco and Shadow of the Colossus, is still nowhere in sight after capturing our hearts back at E3 2009. Rumors of its demise have circled for years, coming to a head right before E3 2014 when IGN reported the game was outright cancelled. PlayStation software product development head Scott Rode issued a statement denying the report, stating that Sony will show it when it's ready. So fans continue the search in hopes that one day they might finally uncover the final mystery and shadow of the Colossus, just like we continue to believe we'll play The Last Guardian. We may be waiting a very, very long time.